Welcome to Blowing Rock, North Carolina, where the snowflakes are flying, the temperatures are plunging, and we can all live vicariously through the snow that is falling in the mountains of North Carolina if you are in a place where it is not snowing. I live in Morganton, North Carolina, and the snowflakes are flying here as well. Itty bitty, teeny tiny little snowflakes. The moon is actually straight up overhead with uh, some snow showers in the area blowing in from a cloud shield that is just to my north. And that's what we're looking at today. Look at this beautiful with the Christmas lights up here and blowing rock. We've got a red light here and up. Oh, now it's green. All systems go for cold rains weather world. And here we go. We're going to start by taking a look at the European ensemble mean. We've been talking about the pattern and the warm up that the pattern is going to evolve into for much of the country. We're going to look at that and see how long that might last and uh, see if it's the end of winter or not, like a lot of people are trying to tell us on social media. And we also have a potential for a northeast snowstorm in addition to a couple of clippers coming out of Canada. So we're going to look at all of that here this morning. So it'll be a rather short show because the weather is fairly tame outside of a cold, brutal Arctic blast that's coming in that will affect much of uh, the north and northern tier and over into the east as we get on into the weekend. And so we're going to start here with the pattern and look at the European ensemble mean. And as we get out right here to uh, right now current, got this big trough in the east. That'll be reinforced over the next couple of days. Got this ridge out in the west and that will continue to be anchored here, at least for a time, bringing you all continued warmth out here, shutting off the snow machine for the ski resorts, unfortunately, but that could turn around as we get on in toward the end of the month. And our big, big block that's just sitting over the Aleutians, it's not ideally placed, but it is allowing cold air to come across the pole and filter into Canada and keep Canada cold, which is a good thing if you like winter in the United States. You need Canada cold, okay? And so we've got that at least one feather in our cap continuing to stay on our side, no matter what the model show over the United States. So that's good. As we go on out here through Saturday and Sunday, look at that big lobe of the polar vortex coming in here. It will be brutally cold with temperatures struggling to get to zero for heights uh, up in the highs up in the Midwest and over into the Great Lakes region. Low temperatures well below zero and Wind chills, extremely dangerous, folks. It will not be all that windy, thank goodness, but what wind does blow will be very, very cold with wind chills potentially getting into the minus 30s. Okay, so that's very, very cold. You need to bundle up. All right, look at this. Big ridge takes over by the time we get into five days out. That would be Tuesday, and it starts to ridge toward the east and take hold over much of the country, and we'll start to lose the cool air feed into the east by the time we get to the 17th and 18th. Uh, we've got another little system that'll swing through that uh, will clip the northern tier in the Great Lakes, potentially providing some snow showers and lake effect snow and more chilly air up there. But uh, by the time we get on out toward the 20th and beyond the week of Christmas, it looks just brutally warm for much of the nation. The biggest signal for cool weather is back in the Pacific Northwest. All the ensemble means are going to this way out of time. And they have been doing that. To be fair, they have been doing this over and over and over, and we've seen this back off and back off and back off. So I'm not sold that we get this big, massive, mega death ridge over the east uh, way on out at, at the end of the range here. It might be warmer than normal, but I'm not sure that we're going to have a big 591 decameter ridge sitting over top of Manhattan. All right, so let's let's uh, just put put that on hold for a little bit, but let's stipulate that the pattern will favor warmer conditions than normal for much of the United States. Will that last? I don't think it will. As we take a look at the actual two meter temperatures, let's just see how warm the European ensemble mean is predicting. And so we've gone out in time. Look at this. <clears throat> Saturday morning, whoo, these pinks are, are 20 to 30 degrees below normal, my friends. And that is just going to be brutally cold into much of the eastern United States. It'll be a quick in and outer, though, because we don't have blocking. We don't have a big flow up, a, a flow stopper up into the northeast Canada to kind of keep this all sealed in. So it will be in and out as that big high pressure moves moves in and uh, works over to the east coast, bringing in cold air. So if we get a storm system to spin up, and it looks like we will, we could throw some moisture back in here and get you a nice little snow vent up there. But uh, a lot of the models are trending progressive with that system, keeping it off the coast, unfortunately. And as we go on out toward Wednesday of next week into Thursday, we start to warm up a little bit. This is, you know, three or four degrees above normal, where you see these uh, really dark pinks. That's uh, in the order of 15 degrees above normal to 20. And then that gets shunted off. We get that little lobe... Uh, 
of cold air working through the Great Lakes and Northeast by the time we get into next weekend. And then, boy, the torch really comes in and sets in and just blows up here as we get on in toward Christmas and just beyond Christmas. Okay, so this is what the model is literally showing. Is this literally going to be what's happening? Uh, the model's been, or what will happen, the model's been really, really bad out in the long range beyond a 7 to 10 beyond that. So um, not really sure that that's going to set in. None of the real teleconnections are favoring a massive, massive torch that just sets in and stays there, you know. So we've we've got some things to kind of iron out as we go forward in time, but you have to give some credence to the fact that all the ensemble suites are showing a warm-up as we go on out in time. Here is the MJO. We've been taking a look at this, and we look at it every day almost. The European continues to show the MJO kind of swimming around the uh, null phase here and it gets back into phase eight and just recall the mjo's uh, area of thunderstorms a big cluster of thunderstorms sort of circumnavigates the globe and you can have multiple clusters it doesn't have to be just one area but uh in any event that goes around the globe and where it is matters to how it potentially influences the jet stream and how strong it is matters as well and it kind of gets weak this chart represents that this the farther out uh toward the edge uh, the stronger the projected cluster of thunderstorms is supposed to be, you know, as it gets on then toward the middle, it's very weak and it has little influence on the pattern. And where it is, as it moves around from, uh, you know, in India over to Africa, you know, as it makes that trek, that's represented by these different phases. We call this sort of a phase diagram, I guess. And then, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. When it's in eight, one, and two, that's our favorable phases for cold and storminess in the United States. And it is swimming around here in some amplitude in phase eight, according to the European. The uh, GFS wants to take it eventually, maybe into phase seven, but it still keeps it predominantly in kind of the null phase up to a fa week phase eight. And as we look at the European extended forecast, it just for that far as I can see, it keeps it out of the bad phases over here in high amplitude in the bad phases. So that's good. You know, we'll just have to see if there are other competing factors as we go on out of time that work against this. And so it's not the, like I told you before, it's not the be all end all or end all be all or whatever the phrase is. It's just not, if you, if you know how that works out, I always forget which one comes first. Let me know in the comments, but uh, in any event, that's what we're looking at here, folks. And so if we take a look here at stratosphere, that's another component that we look at. And uh, we're looking here at 50 millibars. So, you know, kind of somewhere near the lower part of the stratosphere. And right now we've got a uh, elongated vortex here. You kind of see that the kind of this oval looking figure of eight type shape. You got a center up here and a kind of a quasi center, you know, down in this area. So it's a stretched vortex and that's good for kind of allowing the jet stream to meander and not bottling all the cold air up in the Arctic. And as we go on out in time, you see how this just progresses. It's sort of uh, kind of the sin, you know, the, the stretching still remains in place, but the anomaly moves around a little bit and eventually it sort of just it comes back over to eastern uh, Canada again as we get way on out in time and, and just kind of migrates through Canada. So the vortex remains stretched. That's kind of the big takeaway here. How will that affect the air at the surface? Well, that is to be seen, but it's much, much better than a tightly wound vortex. I can tell you that. And then finally, taking a look here at... El Nino, La Nina, we are in La Nina conditions. This is the neutral line, this black line that goes across, and these are the model projections of where the temperatures out in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of South America are going to go. And as you can see, we've bottomed out. Most of the models take this up in toward neutral. And so once we get above uh, minus five degrees, we start to get into that in so neutral phase. And that is forecast to happen imminently. It's actually already happening. And we're starting to see a response here with temperatures going up toward neutral. And uh, as we get on into the spring months, we'll probably transition into El Nino. So La Nina is rapidly dying and losing, it will eventually lose its influence on the pattern completely. But that, you know, we're still going to have some in, uh, uh, La Nina conditions through the winter time occasionally. So don't expect it to just go away like that. All right. So that's what we're looking at in terms of all of our uh, pattern updates. Now we're going to take a look at the actual weather over the next couple of days, see what you can expect as we head into the weekend and look at that potential northeast storm as we get on into late a weekend my friends if you haven't yet done so hit the subscribe button right down below give the content a like leave a comment let me know where you're commenting from and what kind of weather you're seeing out there we've had a lot of growth in this channel thank you to all the new subscribers and 
Thank you to all the old subscribers who watch the video. Thank you to everybody that watches the video. Really appreciate that. We've got our Thomas Kincaid mug here. Look at that. Wouldn't that be nice to live in a place like that and have socials and engagements and people coming over with snow all over the ground and Christmas lights up. Boy, I bet some of you up north get to see that all the time. And I'm a little bit jealous because of it, but that's okay. We'll get our turn down here one of these days. Um, but uh, anyway, if there's anything I can be in prayer about, please put it in the comment section. I want to support you, even though society says we ought to hate each other. Uh, if we think differently than each other, that's not really the right way to be. And we want to support you here on this channel and really appreciate your support for me as well. Continue to pray for me and Continue to pray for the channel if you are inclined to do so. Right now, we've got some snowflakes flying in the southern Appalachians, as I said before. We've got lake effect snow going on. And, of course, today we're looking at some light snow up here in interior portions of the northeast. Another little clipper system brought some winter weather into the Dakotas. That will be slipping into Iowa and uh, central Illinois and over into southern Indiana as the day wears on today. More rain into the northwest. And as we go on in toward Friday, that system will work into the southern Appalachians here, bringing some more snow to places here that have got seen quite a bit over the last couple of weeks, including central Virginia, where you could pick up a dusting, maybe a half an inch with that, uh, and more snow coming in in front of this high pressure out here, dropping the Arctic hammer out of Canada. As we get into the weekend, we're looking at less rain up in the Pacific Northwest, which is good. A lot of flooding and issues going on up there. There comes the big Arctic high, 1045 maybe. Uh, ultimately, it will be the strength of it as it gets on in here. Look at that. And the snow just kind of flying out ahead of that. And that will help to spark. That's with an upper level system. That'll help to spark a um, low pressure off the coast, as we'll see in a moment. Look at that snow. It just works through the Ohio Valley. And there's your low pressure starting to take shape, bringing snow to Philly up into New York City, over into Hartford, up to Boston. I-95 corridor getting a little light snow, depending on where this storm system initially starts to develop, how quickly it develops, and how closely it tracks to the coast. That is going to make all the difference, as you would guess, in terms of snowfall amounts. Now, this isn't going to be one of those big blizzards where it blows up and just sort of slowly works up the coast. We don't have blocking to the north. We don't have a synoptic situation that supports that, but you could see some snow. And some of the models, like the GFS, is really offshore with this. The Europeans back a little closer. The AI is even a little bit closer than that. So something to certainly watch. And snow is in the picture potentially up here. So keep your eye to uh, on the forecast over the next couple of days as this will change. As you get along the coast, you might see some mixing because uh, water temperature is a little bit warm. There comes that high pressure. And by the time we get on into the Saturday and Sunday, we're going to be feeling the full brunt of that over the New England states and and uh, the New England area and the Northeast states, what I meant to say, and of course the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley too, as we get on out toward early next week, the uh, high begins to weaken and uh, things begin to moderate for much of the country. We'll see additional storm systems working into the Pacific Northwest, bringing some more rain back there, hopefully not the kind of rain that we saw uh, you know, over the past couple of days. Here are your temperatures as we head on in toward Friday morning. Look at this. Very, very chilly up in the plains with below zero uh, values up there and that will just continue to become more and more impressive impressively cold as we work through friday and toward um saturday and sunday into the weekend look at this minus 20s getting into the midwest and these are actual temperatures not wind chills wind chills are going to be lower than this by the time we get on in toward the weekend we head out to work monday morning we are looking uh, at very, very cold temperatures over here. We're going to see uh, temperatures Monday morning in the teens for much of the upper southeast, still below zero for parts of the Ohio Valley. And uh, then things will begin to moderate as we head on in toward the week, uh, next week a little bit. We're still to Tuesday. We still have some Arctic air to deal with. But as we get on in toward mid next week, we're going to lose a lot of that, except for the very far northern tier where we'll see these intrusions continue to poke in up there. So that is what our temperature profiles look like, my friends. As far as snow cover goes, there's your snow cover or snow uh, estimated snowfall forecast over the next two weeks from the European Ensemble. It means a lot of this here that you're seeing is falling on the front end of that most of the stuff that falls kind of in the back end of the period, according to the ensemble, is up here in Canada and over into the uh, Rockies and Cascades. And some of the uh, snow will fall up here in the 
far sections of the northeast, of our northern sections. Here is the snow depth forecast, so we're going to lose some of that snow cover that's currently in place from the plains to the east, but uh, Canada will still stay cold with a lot of snow up there, and that's what we're looking at over the next couple of weeks. Here's your space weather forecast. Well, we've been in solar storm conditions. You can see here on the KP, got to geomagnetic storm conditions level two, okay? So that's what we're looking at. That is waxing. It was waxing yesterday, is waning now. And so we're coming back down toward normal, not really looking at a lot in the way of aurora viewing over the next 24 hours. There is at the disk, and you can see the big scary sunspots are off, heading away, and nothing really to speak of that uh, we've got our eye on. Now, we can always have a have a sunspot go off no matter how green it looks or innocuous it looks and you can always have a film interrupt and send a CME our way but right now none of that looks very very likely at the moment so we're in good shape there earthquake wise we have not seen anything else so there's no reason to even really show this page so we'll go back to this page and uh, that is it my friends we've got a new moon coming up on the 19th of December that's next week but uh, that's all the show for today I'll be back tomorrow with a full episode of cold rains weather world we'll have your weather IQ question as well and if you have any questions in the meantime just put them in the comment section I'll be happy to look and look at all of those and answer those in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful day for your Thursday as we approach the end of the week. Get your Christmas shopping done. If you don't have snow to contend with, that should be an easy task. That way you can just coast into the holidays. All right, that's it, folks. Have a great day, and we'll see you back soon. Take care and God bless.